Good morning. How's everyone doing? Day two, here we go. Everyone have some coffee, caffeinated for the next day? All right, we're gonna get started. Find your seats, everyone. Let's get comfy. We have an another, another amazing day planned for you. Coming up, we have our community favorite, the Hackathon, so get excited about that. We're gonna do a fun session later with all of our co-founders, and to kick it off, an inspiring fireside chat. But first, a few reminders. Posh Fixings is back again on the second floor. There's still a lot left, so if you didn't grab something yesterday, make sure to head down there. How many of you guys snacked something yesterday? Awesome. And we, of course, still have our sponsors out here right outside the doors, so make sure you stop by and say hi. And the Posh, the Posh Markets pop-up is outside happening again, so be sure to check out everything happening there as well. Yeah, and in the Posh Market pop-ups, each one, we're doing two different giveaways. So stop by, there's a hashtag for each one, you post a photo, and you have a chance to win some awesome prizes. So definitely go check those out today. You don't wanna miss that. Uh, so let's get right into the first session of the day. You're about to hear what it takes to create an immersive and connected commerce experience in today's retail landscape. So please give a posh love filled welcome to two leaders I'm personally very inspired by, our Chief Operations Officer, John McDonald, and co-founder and Senior Vice President of New Markets, Tracy Sun. Good morning. It's a beautiful Arizona dip morning here, and I'm so impressed all of you got up at, at this early hour to, to see us. So We thought for sure yeah. there'd be like 12 people here. <laughs> we were hoping. No, no, just kidding. <laughs> um, before we start, I just wanted to uh, kind of, uh, Tracy, when I joined uh, Poshmark about six years ago, um, was the one who really welcomed me and has helped me through my journey at Poshmark. And so I just wanted to say it's, it's an honor to be up here and, uh, you know, thank you. Now, for those of you who don't know Tracy, Tracy is kind of the, the, the leader and has led us and now is, is still leading us into all things expansion. Um, new, new segments of users such as males, new types of inventory, a lot of the boutique, wholesale, different things. Um, all of these new category expansions, um, she's, she's really the, the one who's driving us into kind of the unknown. And uh, so I think it really makes it perfect that we're going to be talking about innovation. But I think the thing to start off with is let's go back into your background. And I don't know if you guys know this, but Tracy's first job was a neuropsychology researcher. I got that right, didn't I? That's right. How did you, how did you get from there to co-founding a very successful fashion company. Just, just like that. It's not <laughs> obvious. Um, yeah, so John's right. I, my first career, uh, I thought I was going to be a doctor. Uh, specifically wanted to be a neurosurgeon, because why not? Um, I think how it started is that, you know, I, I grew up uh, raised by immigrant parents, and they were like, okay, we're, we came to this country, you can be a doctor, you can be a lawyer, you can be a banker, pick one of those three. And so I was like, okay, if those are my options, I'll be a doctor, because I love helping people, I love working with people, and that's all I knew. Um, but when I got to the point where I started doing the work, which I loved, um, there was something missing, and it's, that was the beginning of my journey to start asking questions about what I wanted and what would fulfill me. And I, I didn't have the answers all the time, but I just kept asking the questions. And, um, and that led me to pursue more creative opportunities. So what I realized is I love science. I will always love science. I always read what's going on in that industry still because I love it. Um, but there's a part of me that likes to build. I like to build things. And that part wasn't getting fulfilled seeing patients day in, day out. Though it was fantastic, there was just like a piece that wasn't exercised. And so I didn't know it back then, but I just kept searching. Um, I joined, after my, my clinical research gig, I joined a husband and wife team who were launching a brand in Brooklyn, New York. 
And at first I just joined them doing a business strategy project as an intern. And then I loved working with them so much that I ended up joining them full time. And um, by my, the end of my tenure there, I was overseeing all of fashion design, merchandising, production, uh, warehousing, uh, the whole manufacturing process in fashion. Um, and I had no experience in that whatsoever. And so how did I do that? It was a skill that I picked up, which I also love. And it's just asking questions. Like, why? Why does that happen? Why do you do it this way? Why do you pick that color? Why did we design it that way? And I learned so much um, about fashion by doing that. To the point where um, af after that, I said, OK, well, I want to bring fashion to so many more people than we can touch through physical product. And I was living in New York, and people love brand and, and fashion in New York, but they don't really know as much about technology. And so I ended up saying, OK, well, I need to I need to partner with people who know this if I don't know. So I made another transition in my career, moved to San Francisco, learned a lot about technology, met Manish. We decided to start Poshmark, which then led me to Gotham and Chathan and you and all of you. And so now we're on this journey, and I, I don't know what's next. You guys can probably help us figure that out. So I, I, a couple times here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring out quotes. I'm, I'm bringing the, the past back to Tracy. And, and a quote you made, I, I read several years back, was every entrepreneur has to have a healthy dose of delusion. <laughs> so what were you thinking when you co-founded Poshmark? And I, and I think you skipped over. Didn't you have a, a startup, kind of a, another startup in, that, in there? Yes. And so you'd already kind of had a startup fold. And now you're yeah, going to Yeah, what John is saying, I had another startup out. before Poshmark that failed really, really spectacularly. Um, and I just kind of glossed over that. But he wants me to go back and revisit that. <laughs> um, so what, yeah, what were you thinking when you, I mean, driving to the other, you know, traveling to the other coast, uh, there's, so there's some delusion there. So great sitting up here with there? you, John. <laughs> um, I, you know, when you're an entrepreneur, and, and I think every, everyone sitting in this room can relate to this. You're doing something that perhaps you didn't think you would be doing five years ago. Uh, the world is slowly accepting it more and more, but we all look a little bit different than some of the people around us. And so what happens when you're doing something different, like being an entrepreneur or starting your own business, is that uh, a lot of people tell you no. They either say it flat out, like you can't do that, or they imply it by asking a lot of questions and like, what, what do you mean you're doing that? You know, so it, it weighs on you like the world is telling you no. And so I, I think in order to really move forward with a business, whether it's a business like Poshmark or a business like what you guys are running, you have to have that super strong belief in yourself to get through all of that. And in a way, that's kind of delusion, right? You have to believe in yourself so much more than anybody else believes in you. And then you can get through the highs and the lows because it's you that's carrying yourself forward. So um, going back to my failed startup, uh, that was really hard. We uh, had a great idea. And um, we did some things right. And we did some things in hindsight that were not right. Um, and when we tried the this was in New York and the financial crisis hit. And so we couldn't raise any more money to fix some of the things that were not right. Um, and so we had to fold it. And my delusion meter was kind of empty <laughs> at that point because the world had really said, no, it's not working. So what I did is I, I took some time off um, to just believe again and dream again and um, believe in myself again. And that's when, when I was ready, that's when I met Manish and my delusion meter was back up. So I was ready to go. <laughs> Well, let's speak to you and Manish. So I don't know if you guys, a lot of you have met Manish and you've met Tracy, but they're, they're quite different people and in good ways. But how did you, tell us a little bit about working together early on and how you complemented each other. Yeah, that's a great question. I, I, I get that a lot. How did you and Manish meet? How did, how did that happen? Um, and I think you're right, we're very different. I mean, for example, his outfits are crazier than mine. <laughs> um, but What's more important, I think, is, is how we're similar. Um, when we met, we probably hung out at coffee shops for about six months before we decided to work together on Poshmark. And 
what we were really trying to figure out is, can we work together? It's less about the idea and, and, and like, can we collaborate on the idea, but do we, we ended up spending more, I spent more time with Manish than I spent with a lot of my friends and family, uh, especially, especially during the early days of building Poshmark. So it's almost like he's my work husband. And you, you wouldn't get married to someone without dating them, right? So in, in, in some senses, Manish and I spent six months getting to know each other and said, when things go really well and we want to celebrate, do we want to celebrate with each other? And when things are really terrible and it feels like we're not going to make it to the next day, do we want to be in the same room next to each other? And the answer ended up being yes, right? We share a lot of the same values um, in life. Um, but you're right, we're different. And that we've partnered together in many different ways over the years. So when we first met, I was the New York fashion girl, and so I taught Manish a lot about um, silhouette styles and the manufacturing process and Pantone colors uh, and about what the shopper, how the shopper really wants to see product and merchandising. He taught me a lot about how to use technology to scale those ideas into something bigger, how to take principles that the retail or fashion industry uses today and instead of just directly applying them, create tools so that we can empower all of you to do it yourself. And so those were the things that he taught me. I would say today, we both are pretty well-schooled. We did a good job teaching each other. And so the way we partner now is as I'm working on projects to expand Poshmark so you can expand your businesses, he is my, one of my main mentors to where I can bring an idea to him and he can help me think through, I love that idea, but how do you make it bigger? How do you make it bigger? How do you make it bigger? And so that's been a, um, a great evolution of our partnership. Yeah, it's interesting. I, Manish, the, the same thing with me is, it's how do you make it bigger? How do you make that idea bigger? Yeah. So I'm hearing a couple of themes. So one is this kind of idea of, as an entrepreneur, that you have to try and fail and then try and fail, and then you're going to succeed. So it's, it's an iterative process. The other one is, is about learning to partner with people. And you know, you've done that very effectively with Manish. Let's switch gears and, and go to innovating at Poshmark. So talk a little bit about maybe some examples of those themes at Poshmark um, where, where you've kind of applied that, those kind of, that kind of learnings you've had earlier in your career. John wants to talk about failure today. <laughs> I'm just going to go no, with it. <laughs> um, yes, so perhaps what you guys don't know is we do a lot of things that don't work um, at Poshmark, or, or, or they don't work as, as, as we intended them to be. And uh, I've definitely had my share of those. Um, one, one example is the, the men's business. We've been working on men's for a few years now. And today, it's, it's taking off and it's going so well and, and we're all so happy. But there were times where we did things that didn't work or, or they worked a little bit, but we thought they would work really well. Um, and so we had to go back to the drawing board and back to the, the drawing board. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm gonna go to quotes then. Let's see, I've got another one here. Um, where did you find all these quotes? I, I, lots of research. So this was a quote a couple of years ago. I am invigorated by dreaming up solutions to seemingly impossible <laughs> problems. You guys like that? <laughs> um, I think you have to do what, what you're passionate about. And you'll know it'll feel good, right? And I, I, that quote, it's, it's very true, but I didn't know that about myself until a few years ago when there, you know, I go about my day and there's lots of things to do. And there were certain things that I did that were so energizing. And then the rest of the stuff I still did and I was happy to do because I loved Poshmark, I loved working with my team, but I started to pay attention to what, uh, what gave me energy, right? Versus what, what are the things that I did that at the end of the day I would sit down and be like, oh, I'm exhausted. And I could tell when I was innovating, when I was working with people who are innovating, I was so energized, I was so excited, I could do it all day, all night. Um, and everything else is great too, but not the same. And uh, 
I think what helped me with that is, um, so I, I grew up in between two cultures. So I, I grew up on the East Coast, but I'm also part of a Chinese family. And my, my parents didn't, um, how do I say this really respectfully, mom and dad, uh, they didn't prepare me for that. I didn't know that I was part of two worlds. I thought it was one world, except nobody else had that experience. So it was very confusing for me. And I think all of you guys, whether you're an immigrant or you're different in, a, in another way, you, you can understand what it feels like when you're different in that way. You feel a little bit weird. Um, but when you are weird or different or see things from a different perspective, you have a lens that nobody else has. And so I think what I, I leaned into is that lens of like, well, why can't it be that way? Because when I was at home and I would look at how Americans did something, I'm like, oh, what, why can't we do it that way? And so I started to bring that together. And what I realize now is I thrive on that. that. That has become something that I thought perhaps was a weakness. It's now turned into a strength. And even more, it's a strength that I really enjoy um, that flexing that muscle. You did well on that one. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, in, in our partnership, um, I, I always kind of think I, I'm always the one saying no to you. And uh, kind of like you were saying earlier, right? It's true. <laughs> you, you, and, uh, you know, it's a little bit of my role, but maybe it's just a little bit of my personality. And, but what I, I'm so impressed with what you do is you're, you're completely unfazed by it. You evolve you, whatever idea you have, you come back and it's even better and we end up doing it and we end up succeeding. Um, talk a little bit about how you've partnered with me. Again, this kind of theme I think of, I, I, I'm really impressed with how you do that with different people. I, speak to that. So for context, I don't think I've heard the word no from someone more than I've heard it from John. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to get back to, to, to you, but do you guys know that when we first started Poshmark, Leanne and I were like, okay, well, you're going to launch a consumer business. You should talk to your prospective customers and ask them, would you use this and get feedback? That's like a very general, um, you know, user research rule of thumb that you should do. And so we did, and we was like, okay, we're going to build this app. It's going to be called Poshmark. It's going to do this. You can sell your stuff from your closet. I think we researched 50 women, and about 49 of the 50 said, no, I, I wouldn't use it. Just no. And so most people were like, okay, they, your customer is telling you no, they don't want it. Clearly they were like, if we followed that advice, we wouldn't be here today. Um, but, but it's all about what does no mean? And if you just heard the no, you might have turned around and walked away. But what we did instead is said, okay, I hear that you said no, but tell us why. And what we found is that they just said, I don't have time and it's too hard. And those are things we could solve, right? So by saying no and asking why, they gave us the feedback on how to turn that no into a yes. And so now coming back to you, John, what I love about working with you is John has strengths that I don't have. And a lot of it is because I'm so focused on trying to create the new, what John does is looks at the future and says, well, that might, you need to figure that out. Or I don't think it's gonna work because that part's gonna break. And it's often things that I don't see. And so what's been really helpful is the no, but then there's always a here's why. And I can focus on the why and fix those and then come back. And so I've learned over the years that the, the more I partner with John, the more successful these projects can be. Yeah, no, I agree. It's a great partnership. So I know you're not done innovating at Poshmark. What are you most excited about that's coming down the road, innovation-wise? What, what, what what's your next challenge, your next impossible challenge, I guess? <laughs> I said Barb. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're gonna hear after us at the hackathon some of the things that we're working on. Um, so I'm excited about all of those, but I, at a high level, here's what I think, and I think you believe this, and everyone at Team Posh believes this. 
Where we are today is fantastic. We've done so much as together, but we are still in the early innings. There's so much more we can do. There's so much we can do to, to build and expand our platforms so that you can there, therefore expand your businesses in so many different ways, whether it's new categories, new features, new tools, new geographies, all of these things can, can help you grow. And so, you know, what am I most excited about? I'm excited to get to all those things, you know? And, and we're, we're doing it, we're building, but I wanna do more. Uh, I look forward to two years from now, PoshFest 21. Um, being able to say, here are the things we did in the last year or two, I, I think they're going to be big. We're in, a, we're in a place where we're really doing a lot behind the scenes to help you grow, and that's, that's the theme of Poshmark and the theme of, of PoshFest. So uh, I'm really excited to get some of those rolled out. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Tracy. Thank you. We got so caught up listening to that that we had to like sprint backstage. We're like, oh my gosh, we're back. That, that was really <laughs> fun to listen to. How great are those guys? Let's hear it for them again. <laughs> so like they said, we have come so far, but there is so much more that we can do. And so we're not going to waste too much time up here because we want to get right into the hackathon. And a few months back, we turned to you guys, our innovative community, and asked for your request of what you wanted to see. And we literally received thousands and thousands. So many. And thousands, <laughs> over 10,000, not even kidding, requests from all of you. And our team went through all of them. So we are very, very excited about what's to come. Yes, and so without further ado, <laughs> let's welcome Vanessa and Calpac from the product and engineering teams to reveal the features that you can expect soon. Hi everyone, good morning. Good morning. Are you all ready for this? Yeah. All right. I am Kalpa Kotari, VP of Platform Engineering at Poshmark. Hi, I'm Vanessa, Senior Director in our product team. Vanessa, do you remember our first ever hackathon reveal back in PoshFest 2016? Yes, you actually brought down Poshmark at that time. Yeah. I don't know if you guys remember. No, that was just me kidding. We actually did listen to your feedback and we came up with some really cool features like sorting by price, offers and bundles, and zooming in on pictures. A lot of you actually are here for the first time, but these are the features that we actually build based on your feedback. And here we are back on stage doing the fourth edition of Hackathon Reveal. So Vanessa, how has our feedback scaled up from our community? Well, as you can see, in 2016, we had 1,000. And look now, this year, we had 13,000. We build everything in service of you all, so we were very thankful for all the sub submissions. We read every single one, and I remember one morning, I think it was like seven o'clock in the morning, I checked my email. Manish had actually review, uh, reviewed all of them in the morning. So it's, it's really amazing. Keep the feedback coming, we love it. Okay, Kalpak, are you ready? Yeah, about that. So we got a little distracted this year. Uh, uh, our team wanted to do something different. Uh, we had our amazing, talented designers and engineers, and they wanted to figure out how to bridge their skills in the world of fashion. So for the first time, I want to reveal something to you. <laughs> Click. It's our first line of hackathon t-shirts. 
<laughs> I know you have a lot of questions, like what does P0 mean? And uh, there's stuff like we spend 16% uh, of our time eating birthday cakes, celebrating everyone's birthdays. There's more to go here, but I also know you're wondering what are these t-shirts got anything to do with me. Well, so here's the thing. The moment our team put these on, they got superpowers. <laughs> Their productivity just went off the charts. And I want to show that in action. That's our team working on the hackathon literally over a weekend in 48 hours. They actually worked on, worked on something super cool. And guess what it is? It's actually right there, Poshfest app. What do you guys think of the Poshfest app? <laughs> I know for me personally, it's been a total game changer. You can access everything right in your app. I hope you all agree it's been amazing. So I just want to give a quick shout out to the team that made this happen. Our India engineering team, who may be watching on a live stream right now, they spent just one weekend and they were able to deliver this amazing app. So can you please all give a huge thank you to that team there. Okay, I think Calpac actually has even more to share today. Yeah, of course. We, we love hearing from you. We love your feedback. This year, we focused on coming up with tools to help you manage your inventory. So our first feature is private listing fields. I know all of you have been asking for this. and. It's a little confusing, so I'm going to actually show you a quick demo. So I'm going to walk over, and we're going to switch. Yeah. So you see our Poshmark app. Uh, this is an internal build. Uh, it's not quite ready yet for prime time, but in a few weeks, this will all be in your hands. Uh, I'm going to. Look at this test closet, Posh Olivia. I'm going to go there. I'm going to pick a listing. Let's look at this common projects. Tournament low sneakers. This is a normal listing, but I'm going to hit edit. I see uh, the usual fields like title, description, etc. But here we go at the bottom. You notice something different? Additional details private. Should I tap on see details? Yes, yeah. please. OK. There we go. We have three new fields. <laughs> so we have SKU, we have cost price, and other info. I'm going to. So, who here attended uh, yesterday's breakout session about inventory processes? by Tori, Tanya, and Pamela. All of you, a lot of you did, great. So uh, the ones that didn't, I'm actually going to show an example that I actually saw yesterday. Uh, SKUs can be used to help you keep track of your inventory, uh, help you locate it uh, if it's you know, stashed away in certain bins, etc. So I'm going to go with an uh, example, BX40. That's a SKU, cost price. I'm assuming everybody knows why you would want to use cost price, right? You want to know what your margins are. And here for additional info, you can put whatever notes you want. It's all totally private to you. I'm going to say thank you, Tori, Tanya, Pamela, and all you poshers. I'm going to hit next, list. Now, if I scroll down, you can notice none of those fields are actually there. But if I hit edit, they're there for you. Now, uh, I just showed you the edit flow because it was easier. I don't want to fill title, description, all of that. But those fields are also available to you in the create flow. So as you're creating listings or editing them, you can go ahead and update whatever you want. 
Now, this is on a listing level. Now, of course, you want access to all of this information in one place, right? So are you ready for our next feature? All right, we're going to switch back to our slides. All right, next feature, introducing my inventory report. <laughs> This is very, very much like your sales report. The difference is, guess, it's not your sole listing, it's all your available listings. And I'm gonna show you a quick example of what it looks like. Of course, you can uh, request uh, through the app a uh, downloadable file, uh, and when you open it up, it's gonna look like this. So, You don't have to manage your own spreadsheets anymore, probably. You just get this download. It, you have access to all the data. It's very similar to the sales report, so a lot of the attributes are there. In addition, all the new private fields, like the SKU, uh, your cost price, and additional notes, other info, is all there. Besides that, there are some other fields that you can actually use to your advantage to decide when you want to do price drops or closet clearouts uh, offered to likers. You can see the number of likes you've received, the number of days the listing has been listed, and the lowest listed price. <laughs> so I am actually super excited to, you know, the fact that we continue to get your feedback, and this is one of the things that all of you have been requesting over and over again. It came in the survey, it came, in fact, in yesterday's breakout session, and here we are with these two super cool features. If you want more details, they will be available in the next session we're doing where we do the Hackathon 411. Um, but that's all I got. Vanessa, is there? Um. Another announcement about those yeah. features, they're actually gonna be coming out in a couple weeks, so stay tuned. Stay tuned. Okay. Yes, I yeah. actually have more to share. You do? What do you have? Are you guys ready? Okay. So, everyone has a story, whether it be your first posh sale, sharing posh love, to one another, or sharing a posh tip. We know that you all want to have deeper connections with one another. Everyone is unique, and together we are Poshmark. Today, we are introducing Posh Stories. We built something that really brings your content to real life. Wait a minute, Vanessa, are you talking about video? <laughs> this is video on I Poshmark? Am. I am. Are you gonna show us something? <laughs> yeah, just give me one second. Okay, are you guys ready for this? Of course we are. Okay. <laughs> I am gonna show you how to create a posh story. So, I wanna show off my posh style. These are preset hashtags that we've created, and I'm gonna show my posh style. to show a boomerang that me and Kalpak created. You know, our spiffy style right there. That, yeah, was that earlier today? <laughs> it was. You can personalize this content by adding text. We're gonna have different fonts available for you to show your creativity off. also tag 
Kolpak, he was in the story. Want to show him some love too. I can also tag the cool blazer he's wearing. <laughs> You can also shop it right there. Whoops. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to post it. So this really allows you to express yourself. Be creative. Give the world a window to your life. I'm going to show you how you consume Posh Stories. So right here, it's the boomerang I just created, the story. You can shop it right there, you can like it, you could add to bundle, you can share it right there. So I'm ready to sell my daughter's Halloween costume. You could show a photo there, use hashtags, you could tag it and you could buy it right there. Isn't that amazing? can also show Posh Love to my Posh family. This is an amazing product and design team that I work with every day. We made this ourselves, by the way. Are you impressed? <laughs> and then here is Calpac Story Stream. This is a throwback to last year. As you can see, there's a direct link to his closet, so you can check it out anytime. And here he's showing Posh Love. He found this amazing jumpsuit on Adiel's closet. Thanks, Adiel, wherever you are. Um, you can shop her closet right there, check out her listings. He's tagged the brand Adidas, so you can also explore Adidas mm -hmm. items. And of course, since he bought that item, he tagged it, but it's sold already. So, what do you guys think? This is the boomerang that I just tagged Kalpak in. It'll show up in his story stream as well. Yeah, Vanessa, I'm thinking, who needs Instagram after this? Yes. Right? So this really helps you share who you are in real time beyond your closet. You know, everyone has a story. It's time to tell it. We will be launching in um, a couple months. We're so excited. If you have further questions, please come to our Hackathon 411 session. We will be going into more detail there. Yeah, so. Oh. Again, uh, we really want to thank you for all of your feedback. Uh, but also, I want to take this opportunity to invite the Hackathon team that's here attending at, uh, at Posh Fest. I want to request them to please come on stage and let's give them a big round of applause. Do a bow. <laughs> You're do a bow. Well, thank, thank you, everyone. It's been a pleasure. Kalpak, anything else you want to add? No, I'm uh, really thankful for all of you, and we look forward to the sessions uh, for going into more details. Thanks, everyone.
for what's to come for Poshmark. Way to go, Team Posh. <laughs> I am so excited about Posh Stories. It's going to take my social media obsessed self to the next level, I swear oh, to God. Oh, my gosh. Just right. get ready. <laughs> and as Vanessa mentioned, if you guys are ready to learn right now how to use these features announced today, they do have a session on the breakout in the breakouts today, so make sure to check your agenda to attend one of their sessions. And so it is almost lunchtime. Pop-ups, like we said, are still happening. And there are some standby appointments for closet consultations coming up. Um, still on the second floor if you're interested in that. And we're also actually going to do a quick giveaway. Who wants to win a Dymo printer? <laughs> yes. So we have some raffle tickets. Mm -hmm. If you stop by the booth, we're giving away Five printers, I believe. All right, let's let's look for those if you winners. you stop by, get your tickets out. Okay. Or oh, no, I'm not sure. we've got names. I'll just oh, read great. your name. Even better. All right, Chelsea Gorman, where are you at? <laughs> Woo! Awesome. Stop by. So all the winners we call today, stop by the Dymo print, the Dymo booth to claim your prize. Who's next? Who's next? Who's feeling lucky? All right, she's feeling lucky. <laughs> Here, Amanda, why don't you read this one? Okay. Beth DuPont. All right, Beth. Congratulations. Okay. All right, Vivi Shields. Vivi Shields, you here, girl? All right, all the way in the back. Woohoo! All right. Good. good thing you saw that. All right. Oh, this is tiny. <laughs> Emmanuel Figueroa. Are you here, Emmanuel? All right. All right. If you're not, we, we'll pick another one. Next. Oh, this one? Heather Hammond. All right, All congrats. Right. Okay, and last but not least, we've got Tiffany King. Right there. Woohoo! So we'll take these to the Dymo booth and claim your prize there. Also, real quick, um, following lunch, we're going to have a posh bingo going on right here, uh, the main stage area. If you fill it up, put your contact info, and you can turn it into the help desk when it's complete. You can also win. We're two lucky winners. will win $100 posh credit. So many Sorry. giveaways, so yes. many things to win. And to clarify, it's not quite lunchtime yet. We're doing breakouts first and then lunch. So I saw After. some people are like, hmm, really? We're ready for lunch again? We just finished breakfast. So just make prepping you guys. There. Yes. So we just wanted to make sure you had all the information you need to break. Once again, there are three time blocks for breakouts. So make sure you select your session just like yesterday. Check the app or the ad printed agenda for your times and the room numbers. And there will be closet consultations and uh, the bingo happening directly following uh, lunch. So we'll see you back here at... Three, Three o'clock. Wow. We'll see you later.